I'm Selma Schimmel at the ESMO meeting, the European Society for Medical Oncology, happening right now in Milan, Italy, and we are going to learn a little bit about what is happening in the area of prostate cancer, and I'm being joined by Professor Johan de Bono, who comes to us from the Institute of Cancer Research at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London, UK, the world's oldest cancer hospital. That is correct. We are um, over 150 years old, and the Institute of Cancer Research celebrated its 100th anniversary this year. Well, I've had uh, the pleasure of doing quite a bit of work at the Royal Marsden, so great institution. Thank you. So, what's happening with prostate cancer? What's happening at this meeting and your research? Prostate cancer is the commonest cancer in men. It's the second commonest killer from cancer in men, and it's an area of critically important unmet medical need. Really for many years we have been uh, working very hard to improve treatment for this disease. Until 2010 we really only had two drugs that definitely improved overall survival in our patients. That was the initial treatment that induced androgen deprivation or testosterone deprivation mm -hmm which led to Charles Huggins, who discovered that, and a Canadian working in Chicago, actually uh, getting a Nobel Prize in 1966. After that, in 2004, docetaxel was actually um, developed and proven to have a survival benefit. And that work was led by um, Ian Tannock, another Canadian, actually he's English, but lived, works in Toronto, uh, with Mario Eisenberger uh, and others. Uh, Mario is in um, Hopkins. So that was really the, the landscape we were all working hard to improve outcome, but unlike in other disease, diseases like breast cancer, prostate cancer has been a Cinderella. We've been working so hard to improve outcome with so many trials not showing a survival benefit. 2010, however, has been a very good year for prostate cancer research and for our patients. And we have more, I guess, hope to offer our patients with new treatments becoming available. And while there's still a lot more work to do, we are excited that our work is finally bearing fruit. Abratron is the work I've presented um, at this meeting. This drug is a pill taken once a day in the morning. It does not have the side effects of chemotherapy, which is a you know, great thing for our patients. Um, and this drug was made at the Institute of Cancer Research in the Royal Marsden in London by uh, Professor Mike Jarman and his team, Jerry Potter and Elaine Barry. They designed it. It was their idea back in uh, the uh, mid-1990s. Um, and I was working in Texas and San Antonio. I moved to London in 2003. And I was blessed to really start working with this drug and see the opportunity of developing this drug. And in collaboration with colleagues at um, UCLA in Los Angeles, Professor Ari Beldegren and Alan Auerbach and um, and others, Gloria Lee, Arturo Molina, who are at Cougar. Um, we designed the very first trials of the Royal Marsden uh, and showed that this drug has a lot of anti-tumor activity, very impressive. We reported that a few years ago and that led to quite a lot of interest uh, and a lot of patients were really very keen to get their hands on the drug. What's the mechanism of action so of this, this drug? So this drug inhibits a key enzyme called CYP17, so it's an enzyme blocker. Now what does that mean? What that means is that inhibits and blocks the cancer cell from making its own hormones. Does every prostate cancer have this enzyme? We believe that actually when prostate cancer cells are actually stressed by the treatments we give our patients, that is androgen deprivation or deprivation of testosterone by the current treatments, these cancer cells are so smart they make their own hormones. And there's now increasing evidence, almost incontrovertible evidence, that this is actually the case for the majority of prostate cancers. And it's exactly that intratumoral um, generation of hormones that we are targeting. Mm -hmm. This enzyme is, that this drug targets is similar to an enzyme that we target in breast cancer called aromatase. And for our breast cancer colleagues, this actually is a very well-known way to target cancer. Again, you know, in breast cancer we have drugs that actually are oral, minimal side effects. I'm not saying there's no side effects, but compared to chemotherapy, this is very well tolerated. Are these similar side effects to other oral therapies? 
The side effects compared to the arm in this trial who did not have any treatment at all were actually generally very mild, um, but uh, included you know, things like hot flushes mm -hmm. um, and... Um, um, Skin? The steroids, the drug can be given with steroids, mm -hmm. although that's not mandatory, but this trial had um, steroids for all the patients that, mm -hmm. that got the drug. Um, and um, essentially the steroids cause weight gain and some skin changes. But really overall, so well, it's so very well tolerated. There's not a lot of side effects. And um, if we actually look at the arm of patients in the trial that didn't get any, tr and the, um, the drug, they got placebo, there was more adverse events than with the new treatment, you know. So actually the patients were suffering more if they didn't get the drug than if they got it, which I think is really, really important. What stage of disease? So these patients are really at the end of their lives. They have weeks to months to live. They've exhausted all the available treatments for this disease. And that's really where we are obligated to start investigating these drugs. Well, patients, it's an interesting point because I've been asked many times, why are these drugs always initiated on later stage disease and not earlier stage disease mm. to maybe prevent a progression of disease? So one of the issues that is really key to prostate cancer medicine is that unlike other diseases like cardiovascular medicine, where you can measure a fall in blood pressure, mm -hmm. and that fall in blood pressure is called a surrogate or intermediate endpoint, mm -hmm. that fall in blood pressure means that the patient will benefit. Or in HIV medicine, a fall in the virus levels in blood mm -hmm. um, predicts survival to, for the patient. And diabetes, fall in blood sugar, means the drug works. Mm -hmm. In prostate cancer medicine, we don't really have that. PSA is really like smoke from a fire. It doesn't really give us an indication of patient benefit. Mm -hmm. You can put out the smoke, but the fire's not gone. You know, it's still there. So um, we need a better surrogate endpoint of overall survival. But the key issues is that at present, we have to measure survival. We have to show these drugs make people live longer. And that really makes us have to study these drugs initially in the late stage setting. But I am pleased to say this drug is also now being studied earlier in the disease, before patients get so sick, before they get chemotherapy. And we are planning trials now even earlier. Remember, that's what was done with Herceptin in breast cancer. The trials initially showed a small but significant survival benefit in very late stage patients, but actually who are really end stage of their disease, advanced disease. But now we know that by giving her septum earlier, that makes a big difference. How many uh, patients were enrolled in the trial or are this currently This trial, trial was a 1,200 patient trial in 150 countries, um, and, uh, sorry, 150 centers um, um, all around the world. You know, um, Europe, North America, Australasia, and um, involved many um, investigators um, and uh, patients and their families. And it was a two-to-one randomized trial. Two-thirds of the patients getting a drug, one-third getting placebo. All patients got steroids. Steroids have some anti-tumor activity in this disease, and patients benefit from that. What's the, where's the status of the drug now in the approval process? So the drug filing to the FDA and EMEA and other regulatory authorities is being uh, expedited. People are working very, very hard even now to try and uh, secure that. Does this have the possibility of being fast-tracked? I, um, I hope so. I guess uh, for our patients, our patients are all hoping that this drug will be available as soon as possible. The profile, though, of the patient at this point will be at what stage of disease? So these, this drug availability initially will be only for patients that have already received chemotherapy with docetaxel. So this trial has shown that this drug improves survival after those stacks of chemotherapy. We have another trial that will report next year that is looking at patients that have not yet had those attacks, so, but who also have advanced disease. So it is our hope that we'll soon have that result available. In order to receive the drug, is there any correlation to genomic, any kind of genomic testing? At this juncture, no. But work is ongoing to try and identify using a molecular test the group of patients that respond. So, a patient who's listening to this interview is dealing with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. 
they have not heard yet about this drug, what do they do? Do they go to their doctor now and say, you know, I, I've heard about this, and try to initiate enrollment into a trial? I think at this point in time, if the patient has already received chemotherapy with docetaxel, mm -hmm. this drug may be appropriate to them. If they have not yet had chemotherapy and are in the earlier stages of their disease, there is as yet no evidence this drug can help them. And we are awaiting more information. But if they've already had chemotherapy, they should speak to their physician and find out more about availability. This trial is closed, it's, it's finished. Closed. Right. Um, and um, the data monitoring committee closed it early because the results were so positive, they felt it was mandatory to cross over the placebo patients to the treatment, uh, to the treatment arm. That's very significant. I'm um, glad we clarified that. And, um, and when did that happen? That happened on the 20th of August, just a few weeks ago. I see. Um, so we've really expedited getting these data to the public you know, uh, domain uh, today, and that we are all working hard to try and get this drug available to our patients as soon as we can worldwide. So I'm reflecting at the ASCO meeting, and in truth, yes, 2010 has been a very good year for prostate cancer. Yes, ma'am. We are working together very hard as a global team, community, mm -hmm. um, to really make a big difference for our poor men suffering of this disease. Thank you. I'm, I'm very excited. So thank you for sharing you this too. information. Professor Johan De Bono from the Institute of Cancer Research, the Royal Marsden Hospital in London, UK. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.